Welcome to the Boxing Locker. I am Matt Goddard, former professional boxer, now boxing coach. And this is another video in my wondrous Boxing 101 series that I'm sure you've watched all the videos of. If you haven't, go back and check those out. Let's get ready to level all your boxing up. In today's video, I'm going to be taking you through how to defend the jab. The jab, the number one, we talked about all this. The jab. Um, if you can take the jab away from an opponent, then you are automatically streaks ahead of them in your, uh, with regards to your capabilities to be successful throwing your own shots, okay? Now, the jab is multi-purposeful, multi-dimensional, and I've talked about it before. It's really important that you have a good jab, but it's equally important that you know how to defend the jab. So today, I'm gonna to take you through five different methods of defense, right? Five different methods of defense for the jab. I'll show you them in Orthodox and Southpaw. Um, just please keep in mind that Orthodox to Southpaw works slightly differently, okay? So um, I'm gonna say you have to presume you're defending Orthodox to Orthodox or Southpaw to Southpaw, or you would have to change the defense up which is something I'll talk about in a video in the future where I really cover the difference between defending orthodox to southpaw and southpaw to orthodox. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and keep an eye out for that one because it will come. So boxing position, orthodox jab, defending an orthodox, uh, sorry, orthodox defense jab, uh, defending an orthodox jab. So I'm in my boxing stance, okay? The first method of defense that we use is the rear hand catch. Now, if you were to catch a ball, you would catch with your palm, right? You would catch the ball here, and then you would be able to cushion the ball, absorb the impact, and use your fingers to grip it, right? It's exactly the same when you're boxing. What I don't wanna see, and what I do see a lot, is people trying to catch with a sideways hand, or with the back of their hand. All that happens then is you end up punching yourself in the face, or you end up not actually stopping the punch coming enough, and people will punch through it. So you're in your boxing stance. All I'm looking to do, I know their punch can't come past this hand, okay? I know it's coming down the center. So I bring my rear hand, in front of my face, okay? I turn my hand forward, nice downward arc of the wrist, and I catch it like I'm catching a ball. My hand grabs their glove, and then I tuck back in. What's important here is that I impact the punch with my hand, and then I stop and snap it back. What I also don't wanna do is this. Now, if I push this hand too far ahead, I'm opening myself up to feints. So my hand always stays behind the other hand, and I drive it out quick to catch, and then it comes straight back into my chin. Nothing else, ready to catch with the inside of that. So that is the first method of defense. The jab comes to you, you catch, you catch, you catch, okay? The second method of defense, again using hand defense, is a barrier, all right? Now, the barrier is essentially a lead hand catch, but by uh, moving the hand further away from ourselves, what we do is we create a barrier from all straight punches that they cannot punch through, okay? That's what's important. So I'm in my boxing stance and I drive that barrier out. Now, I'm looking to catch the straight punch and lift slightly. So my elbow is now at shoulder height. My rear hand stays tucked in. What this does is it means that their next straight shot can't get through that easily, all right? If my hand is low, I would catch the jab and then the right hand come behind it and clip me heavy over the top. By lifting that up, the shoulder lifts, and I protect myself. So I'm in my stance, the jab comes to me, I drive it up, and I catch out there. That's a barrier, right? Nice and strong, nice and firm. They can't break that flow. As they throw the cross, this shoulder's defending me. I'm in a position to come back and do my own shots, my own counters, throw my own punches, right? So we've caught with the rear hand on the first defense, and now we're throwing the barrier out there, which is the lead hand, and it drives out and up, okay? I should have which I didn't, talked about the catch in Southpaw. So I'll take you through the catch and the barrier in Southpaw before we move on to the next, which is a little bit of head movement. So I'm in my boxing stance, okay? Southpaw position, I'm nice and tucked in, everything balanced. As that jab comes to me, same premise. I throw that left hand forward, get that palm out, strong wrist, like a talon, like a claw. I grab it and I tuck in, grab it and I tuck in, grab it and I tuck in. I don't wanna do this with my body, I wanna keep that right shoulder forward so I'm firm and balanced catch and tuck in. On the barrier, same premise, it comes up. I catch and I come up. Elbow high, shoulder lifts, protects the chin, everything's nice and safe there, okay? So that barrier goes there, and I'm in position, ready to work down that line. Down the pipe, as they call it in the old days, yeah? Straight down the pipe. So I'm in position, and I lift and raise, and then I'm there to throw. 
Remember to keep that elbow high, keep the palm forward, nice wide spread on the glove. Make sure that you're covering that whole vision as much as possible so they don't feel confident enough to throw the next punch, right? So there we have got the um, uh, catch and the barrier in orthodox and southpaw. Next up, we're going to look at the slip, all right? Now the slip is the head movement we're going to go through here. I call this an outside slip, all right? I personally think an outside slip is anything that goes outside of the center line, outside of the jab, all right? So I'm looking to get outside of the jab. So when I slip outside, I'm coming this way. What's important here is that I offset my weight with my hips, and then my chin is nice and tucked, and that my hand position is still correct. When you slip, you want to bring that hand in front of your uh, face, and thumb goes to shoulder, so that now I'm here, I can't get chopped up over the top, and I'm in a nice, defensively secure position, looking out the tops of my eyes, ready to work over the top and do other things, right? So as the jab comes at me, I'm here, and I slip. This hand comes in tight, this hand stays here, I can then do other things from down there, or I can come over the top and throw my punches, right? Head off the center line. What I don't want to do, and what I see a lot of people talk about, is dropping all the way into that back leg, right? If you overload that back leg and you get hit with another straight punch, you have no resistance, you're going to end up falling back into the ropes, it's going to end up getting you hurt, okay? So what I try to do is keep my hips central. My head now gets nearer to the opponent, which means that their arm is giving me defense. Their arm's extended over the top, and it's defending me from the next shot. I'm tucked in nicely, I'm ready to work and throw my own punches and I'm nearer to the target, okay? So when we slip, we try to get nearer to the target, keeping our weight central. Now I'm in my boxing stance, southpaw, and I'm gonna slip the other way. So I'm here, okay? Weight offsets, evenly distributed, position is correct, rear hand comes in front of the face, I'm ready to work and throw my shots, or we'll talk about in the future, I can punch as I move, and land my own counters to prevent them coming through it, all right? So the slip. Now, the fourth and easiest of all of these defensive methods is nice and simple, the step back, right? You're looking to defend a punch. What's the easiest way to defend it? Not be there, right? If a punch can't hit you anywhere on the body, you're not absorbing any impact. If you're not absorbing any impact, you're not getting hurt, it's not sapping your energy, so it's a lot easier. You're saving yourself, you're gonna be in a better position to throw your own shots. So when that comes back at me, I step back. That was it. Amazingly simple, right? Jab comes at me, I take a step back. The jab cannot hit me. Now, I'm in absolutely no danger. If I know I'm within range, and they throw the jab, I start seeing that punch move, I take a step back, I keep my weight evenly distributed, everything is correct. I'm in a position to deal with anything else they do, and equally, the punch has missed me, which means it might set me up to throw my own counters. Same thing in a southpaw stance, take a step back and I'm in exactly the right position to throw whatever shots I need to throw after that, right? So, I'm not gonna talk about that anymore because it's that simple, it really is that simple. As Soon as you see the hand flicker, boom, step back, dealt with, right? The last and final defense is the parry. Now, parries are good and bad. They have a lot of dangerous factors to them, which I'll talk you, talk you through quickly now, right? First and foremost, the idea is to redirect the punch, which is a good idea. We're not absorbing impact if we redirect. So as the jab comes to me, I'm gonna use my rear hand to push across, okay? That's gonna push the punch in that direction away from me, drive their weight in that direction. With a little bit of footwork, I can reset and create a new angle. The problem we have with that one is, if they faint and I do this, I've opened my whole face up to a big lead hook that's gonna end up sparking me out. Same thing in this one. If I'm in southpaw stance and I catch the southpaw jab, parry it across, my face is open, right? So you have to be really, really intelligent about how, how you use this and be sure to only use it at full extension, right? That's my top tip. Don't parry at mid to short range. Always and only parry at long range because you've got way more time to see the punch coming if you do happen to get fainted out and you fall for it, right? So the parry, I see the punch coming. I redirect across and then I'm ready to work again. I see the punch coming. I redirect across. I don't want to redirect the punch into my own hand, okay? So I want to push towards the hand and in front of, again, which is why it opens my face up so much. When I redirect, that then pushes the punch past my own lead hand, okay? So I come in this direction, and then I swap over, and I come in this direction, come in this direction, 
right? There we have it, guys. Five ways to defend the jab. If you can take your take the opponent's jab from them, then you're in a much better situation, and they're going to find it really difficult to shut you down, particularly if you've established your own. Thanks for watching another video in my Boxing 101 series. Hope you enjoyed it. As always, subscribe, comment, like, and we will uh, have a discussion about any questions you have down below. Take care, guys.